Microsoft's Windows 7 is finally upon us. And here's the big question that we're all faced with. Will it fare better than Vista? Will it be even better than the popular Windows XP? We take a look at Windows Lucky Number 7 and its rival, the Mac Snow Leopard, to see if the new Windows operating system has what it takes to make you go weak in your knees, and whether the Snow Leopard will be growling in jealousy with its very own set of features. Right, so today in Viewpoint, we're going to be talking to two executives associated with Windows 7 and Snow Leopard to find out more about their respective OSs. We've got the questions and we're going to get the answers starting right now. So welcome Matt to Viewpoint. Thank you. Why don't you tell the viewers what you do over here in Microsoft? Okay, so my job at Microsoft is essentially the Windows Client Business Group Lead. So that means I look after product marketing and the revenue sales of Windows. Hi Darren, welcome to Viewpoint. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you. And welcome to Apple. Thank you, it's really nice. Um, tell us the viewers out there, what do you do over here at Apple? Well, my name is Darren and I'm a senior manager with Apple in Asia and I help manage products, uh, products like for example, uh, Mac OS X uh, and other software products uh, within Apple. Great, so we're gonna kick it off. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, why was Vista not so well received by you know, consumers and critics alike? I think Vista was a situation where we had a, a, a product which we, wouldn't really, we really wanted to get out there into the public and unfortunately I think a lot of the, the situations where you know, software vendors weren't ready, our hardware partners mm -hmm. weren't ready and I think partially that's our own fault, right? We okay. probably didn't educate them enough. Okay. I think with Windows 7 you'll see us turn that around. You know, from the product inception and planning phase, mm -hmm. we've actually had the hardware partners with us. We've had the mm -hmm. software developers with us all the way through. So as the product itself has evolved, they've been able to actually take those innovations and put them into their own product. So they actually benefit from the overall OS. So the response has been good with Win7 so it's far? It's been extremely positive. People are very excited about it. The hardware partners are excited. The software partners are very excited. All right, all right. Okay, so Darren, uh, a recent study showed that 18% of users upgraded to Snow Leopard do you think this is because it's a minor upgrade or and why do you think users are not biting? Well, we don't have any specific numbers to mm -hmm. share, but Snow Leopard is a major upgrade to Mac OS X. Okay. We have re rewritten 90% of the previous version. Right. And what users can expect is a much faster, a more secure and more intuitive Mac. Right. Right, so Matt, what are the new features in Windows 7 that are gonna make the consumers go wow when they see it? I think there's a number of different things that we've done to really make the, the consumer excited, right? Mm -hmm. we, we sort of look at it from actually making everyday tasks easier, making it uh, less interruptive and also making new things possible. So mm -hmm. I think the users will be immediately excited about things mm -hmm. we do with the windows itself, mm -hmm. right? Being able to go ahead and dock windows into the sides of the screen okay. to, in, to inter integrate in human gesture support, you know, right. so things like shaking the actual applications okay. and seeing how it manages. Um, and then as we move into some of the more advanced features such as play to, for example, mm -hmm. connecting your digital home environments, you know, remote streaming of the digital media from one PC to the other. Mm -hmm. um, and also things like Windows Touch, for example, the ability to actually interact with your PC, not through a mouse and keyboard, but through actual physical contact with the screen. Okay. That's really inspiring a lot of users. Um, some of our viewers have commented that the Windows taskbar looks like the dock and, and, and Expose it looks like, you know, Arrow Peak and all that. What are your comments on that? I think when we, we focus on the taskbar itself, this isn't something we've sort of looked at and said, okay, what are other people doing? Mm -hmm. A lot of the focus in product development has actually been to go ahead and understand how consumers actually use a product, to work out where they spend their time and try and identify areas of optimization they can get access to. And so things like the taskbar, being yeah. able to go ahead and right click on an application mm -hmm. and instantly see the relevant documents that interact with that application through one click. Okay. Right? So what you'll see there through the taskbar itself is not just a visual element mm -hmm. style or things like that. It's all about saying, you know what, I want to get access to my data faster. I right click on it, I see the list, I engage. Okay. All right, so this is the 24 inch? Or 20, 24 yeah, this right? is the 24 inch LED display. Okay. That's uh, our latest version of uh, iPhoto. Cool. Only. All right, so Darren, you know, Windows 7 is just coming up, I'm sure mm -hmm. you know that. Um, we look at the features that look kind of similar to, you know, the Snow Leopard, such as the uh, Expose with Arrow Peak and the Dock with Taskbar. 
um, how do your features you know, differentiate or compare to them? Well, the Mac has always been different. It's mm -hmm. always been better than the Windows flat platform. Right. It's essentially, is isn't just about the UI. Okay. You have to look at the core itself, and that's where Mac OS X really stands out. Okay. It's more stable, mm -hmm. uh, it, and it's more usable as well. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, when our users buy a Mac, mm -hmm. they love that experience. They love that experience because the hardware is very tightly integrated with the software. Okay. And so we can really produce a much better system than anybody else can. Right, so there's a rumour going on that Windows 7 actually improves battery life on um, notebooks and netbooks. Have you heard anything about this? Yeah, I mean, this is something we're actually seeing a lot of users actually experience, mm -hmm. right? And what tends to happen is because of the processing that's actually been reduced in the optimization of the actual operating mm -hmm. system, we're seeing now that it's more intelligent in the way it actually uses battery life. So okay. non-essential services can be shut down after a period of inactivity. Right. So that actually increases the battery life. Ah, okay. And can you care to share with us more about the energy usage on Windows 7? Yeah, so, so what's interesting is that with Windows 7, mm -hmm. after a period of inactivity, like I said, it shuts it down. Yeah. Now, we've actually seen this in studies that after 15 minutes, by default, mm -hmm. it will actually go ahead and shut down non-essential services, like the monitor, for example. Okay. And now we, from that actual shutdown, we've experienced up to 40% electricity savings on the actual machine. Mm -hmm. So it's really efficient for the way it actually handles electricity. Alright, you know, you mentioned stuff about power saving options and energy and all that. Uh, with Snow Leopard, do you think it plays a part in minimizing energy usage and all? Uh, yeah, Apple has a comprehensive uh, approach to the way we account for all the power con consumption and emissions. Uh, and majority of them comes from the use of our products. Okay. So what we have done, like no other manufacturer can do, is to tightly integrate, again, all the software and the hardware mm -hmm. to really save on e energy use. And there are really three ways, right, which you can save on energy which use. Are? One, which is to use really efficient uh, power, mm -hmm. use low energy consumption components, okay. and really the power management features in the software. Right. And we tightly integrate all of those. So for example, your Mac OS X mm -hmm. will spin down whenever possible. Uh, it will dim down the power saving, already power saving LED displays. Okay. As I mentioned, even between keystrokes, we monitor all the processor usage. Uh, in, in fact, if you look at the Mac Mini, for example, mm -hmm. that consumes about 25% of a typical light bulb, which is fantastic. Wow. It's the most efficient desktop you have in the market today. So in terms of electricity bills and all that? Yeah, that's right. So Matt, give me one word to describe your operating system. Go. Simplified. So Darren, give me one word to describe your operating system. Go. Awesome. <laughs>